Should be R S R S three and R S five. And notice here that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, and the identity should always be composed of its own consciousness class. And the reason why is because G X G inverse. For G, E, G inverse from the identity is always equal to G, G inverse equals G. So you always guarantee at least one contribution class with exactly one element, and that would be the identity element. Always guarantee at least one. So, so most we get 12 elements here. So we just partition these 12 elements in the six sets right here, and each one is an equivalence class. And these are like all the contributes classes. And this is important because we're going to have to talk about proportion groups next time. And we're essentially going to say, okay, when is it such that, so I want to be, I'm crazy, right? I'm so crazy because I have groups. I form groups, right? But now I want to form groups from groups. So specifically subgroups. When can I say, when we multiply this group by some element x? Then multiply by something else, and then multiply the total operation of y times h equals x, y, h. I want to form a new group like this. When is it okay to form this type of multiplication? A multiplication on groups. Groups from groups. That's crazy. And, and how can we have it? When is this allowed? When does it work? When does this either work? It's only when h is formed from a union of consciousness classes. H to give these classes. So, uh, okay. And that's why we're, we're bothering with these classes. And if it's an appealing group, then every subgroup has that in more property because it's each one has to be unique these classes. Each one, each consciousness class is just exactly what it means. Okay. So, an example of union, by the way, of consciousness class is R, R pi, and E. That's an union consciousness class. Or if the elements themselves, for example, the union functions classes. Some things are not unions because, for example, take this element and this element. Well, it gets through the rest of it that functions class. And if you want a subgroup or an actual group, it has to always have a unit and it has to be maintained closure. Okay. And of course, the entire space, the entire set is a union of functions classes. As the union of all elements. Okay. Anyway, this, uh, there's a proof about the center always being all the singleton function piece of classes. Dude, that's that's easy. It's just we prove Z and G. Well, Z and G knows the define the center is defined as the set of all X in G, where for any Y in G. Just like we have with the group of the dealing classes and having only a singleton and the building group only having singleton and one classes, we also know that for any x in G, or x in the confidence in the center, if you have G, X, G inverse, so we're looking at the confidence of, um, of the elements in the center, it equals to G, G inverse x by definition of um, 
by being concentric it has to do with every element of G is going to equal to X. So for all the element that any in the center that's conjugate it has to be, has to be conjugate to itself. Anyway, this is my electron controversy. I'll release later a lecture on portion group this week. Thank you very much. Math Ninja out!